It's Freedom Files with James Burns on American Freedom Radio. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is August 4th, 2011. James Burns hanging out with you this afternoon. About to be joined by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. A lot of things we're going to go over with Bob Chapman in the first hour today. Uh, the big thing right now, of course, I don't know if you've been uh, keeping track of the news, but the Dow has been tanking all afternoon. Um, when I first looked at it about two hours ago, it was down to around 400 points. Then it slid down to 450 points. Now it's at, according to Drudge Report, 512 points. That's how far down the Dow is right now, live on this Thursday afternoon, August 4th, 2011. You're listening to Freedom Files. I'm James Burns, along with Adam, my network producer, man the helm back at AFRHQ in Austin, Texas. I am coming at you live from Shreveport, Louisiana. And wow, this is a very, very bad sign indeed that the Dow has gone down to 512 points. 512 points. This is not exactly a good sign. And we're joined now live by Bob Chapman over at the inter internationalforecaster.com. Bob, are you keeping track of what's happening with the Dow? I mean, it's down 512 points. I mean, that's insane. That's what government does when they want to do something. And it's my opinion that this is not a natural correction. In fact, if you look at the S&P, it's down 540 Dow points. And if you look at NASDAQ, it's down 820 Dow points. Can you believe that? I mean, it, it definitely looks like that there's something going on behind the scenes, Bob. And that was one of my first suspicions as well when I started seeing this, that this is being done completely by design. Yep. And uh, I don't yet know what they're after, but they're appointing this 12-member committee, uh, three Democrats and three Republicans from the House and the Senate. And anybody who voted against the bill is automatically discharged. Uh, they cannot be part of that committee. And what that committee does is it totally goes around the, uh, the House and the Senate in an unconstitutional manner. And it's like the Supreme Soviet or the ruling body that Adolf Hitler set up in Germany. They did the same thing, both of them. And they get silver down $3 and gold's down twelve eighty. dollars uh, the commodity market's been ravaged. Oil is off 543 at 86.50. Uh, this is all by design. It's all deliberate. Uh, they have the wherewithal to be able to do what they want. And, um, they're doing it. Um, what the end result is, I don't know yet. In other words, what I'm saying is I don't, I haven't figured out yet exactly what their goals are, and there'll be more than one goal. There always is. There'll be three or four probably. And um, it's really upset everything. The markets in Europe are going through the same thing. And granted, there's serious trouble in Europe on the bailing out of Greece because the citizens of Germany, Holland, and Finland are refusing to go along with the program. And uh, they're going through the summer vacation season, which is for the whole month of August. And so they're not going to act on anything. Uh, the only thing that's happened is the European Central Bank has been buying bonds in the marketplace with money they don't have. Uh, they're already in serious trouble 
from a financial viewpoint because that means that the money that they've created by buying these bonds has to be supplied by the nations who are members of the Eurozone. And I don't think they're going to do it. And at the same time, we've just seen the worst piece of legislation probably ever in America under the guise of the extension of debt, which could have been solved in 15 minutes. There's much more to this than meets the eye. Uh, I think that we're going to, over the next two to three years, go into a dictatorial mode in the United States. And we're going to end up like Nazi Germany. Corporatist fascism. And I believe that uh, these were some very important events that you just saw. The public doesn't have a clue to what's going on. And I'm sure that everybody who has retirement funds of one form or another is getting crucified. And this could keep up. Uh, There's no uh, support level until you get somewhere on the Dow uh, between 8,500 and 10,500. We've been telling people to get out around 11,800, 11,600. But on the other hand, we don't have money put people in the market except those who own gold and silver shares, and that's it. In fact, a lot of people want to buy oil stocks, and I told them no, because when the market goes down, oil and gas stocks will go down with it. That's the way it always happens. And, um, and so it's, it's quite a mess, but I, I haven't figured out their goals yet. Uh, so is down 304, gold is down 1270. And um, there's no reason for them to be down. And, of course, you have got the same perpetual naked shirt position uh, by J.P. Morgan Chase and HSBC, which is bigger. I'm, I don't know how much bigger, but it's bigger than what they had in April before Silver fell from fifty to thirty-two and a half dollars. So it, it's it's hard to tell right away what their goals are. But I think once they set up this panel of these twelve people, we'll call it the Supreme Fascist Council. <laughs> uh, they're going to start doing legislation and totally bypass Congress. That's what's going on. It's dictatorial government. That's what they're headed for. And Americans better be ready for it. One of the first things they'll do once they are comfortable, and uh, there hasn't been too much flack about what they're doing, the first thing they'll do is go after the guns. The first thing they'll do. Yeah, that's definitely one of their targets right now, according to uh, the gun owners of America. And, of course, uh, Alex Jones and Paul Joseph Watson over at InfoWars, uh, they've been covering this as well for the past couple of weeks, this super Congress. And it's it's a pretty scary deal. I mean, you have these these twelve members. It's technically going to be thirteen because you're going to have the president as a you know you know de facto leader of the council. And they're not saying exactly who is going to be selecting the uh, members of the super congress. And I get the feeling it's going to be very similar, Bob, to the council of governors with the fifty FEMA regions and the fifty FEMA regional governors. And I mean, they're going to have more powers. And at the same time, they're not going to be held to the same standard or, you know, responsibilities as the quote-unquote current system. And you're absolutely right. We're heading towards a, a fascist, corporatist dictatorship. And, I mean, you and I both n- don't know what their end goal is, but we know one thing. Their goals are not good. And that's true. And what's bad about the market today, not only was it down, it ended up in the lows for the day which means tomorrow uh, is going to be another nasty day. And the government has the ability to stop this fall, and they're not using it. And that's obvious. So they obviously want it to go down. And uh, it may be that they want it to go down now, 
because the elections are a year away, well, every year and a quarter away. And um, maybe they'll take it back down over the next several months to 65.50 where it went previously. And we made that call. We said 66.50, a 6600, and it went to 65.50. That was that was a tremendous call. Uh, nobody else made that call. Um, but it, it's hard to tell, you know, where they want to bring it. And they are well aware that the credit default swamps that have been sold by the U.S. banks are worthless. And I think the banks in Europe have already been told they're not going to pay off on them. And I think that's another factor that the insiders know this. And this is the biggest one-day percentage drop since uh, uh, March of '09, when we were headed uh, towards 65.50. So, uh, I mean, the 10 years, 242. I mean, that's very surprising. But it's the uh, movement of money out of stocks into bonds irrespective of the yield, just some place to put the money. And um, it's going to get worse. 11,384. Um, it could get down to 10,500 tomorrow. Because there's no effort to stop it. That's what the President's Working Group and Financial Markets, also known as the Plunger, Plunge Protection Team, that's their job to do that. They're not doing it. They simply are not doing it. So this thing is planned. You know, the question is what level? I don't know. Could be 8,500, could be 10,5. Well, there's just no telling. With gold and it, silver, it's going to be far more difficult because there's no overhang in the silver market. And uh, uh, that can run by right back up again. Three dollars is uh, too many uh, physical buyers in the gold market. Now, sure, they can take it down, but not four. I might take it back to uh, test uh, sixteen hundred, which would be another fifty-three dollars. But um, uh, they may do that in the next couple of days. And of course, all of this is very unexpected. I mean. I think people, some people thought that uh, the stock market would have a correction, but I don't think that they thought it would be this quick and of such volume and magnitude. I mean, earlier on, the FTSE was off 191.37, and that's the most important gauge in Europe. And um, let's see, 191. i got to figure this out. No problem. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. We're going over uh, many different issues right now. It seems to all be coming to a head. The Dow plummeting this afternoon. To They're saying it's at 512 points down. Uh, we're talking about this phony debt deal, the Super Congress and uh, so many other things, including what's happening in Europe. Uh, they're on the verge of a financial collapse. And uh, Bob, CNN is announcing that uh, a new <laughs> recession has begun, uh, you know, more mainstream media propaganda. I mean, the, the recession never ended. And in my humble opinion, I, I believe we've been in a depression for quite some time. And they're also saying that the unemployment benefits are drying up and coming to an end. Well, that's true. And uh, in... And you've got to remember, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the FTSE closes in London. And so the market closes at um, 2.30. Is it 2.30? Well, anyway, there was 10, 11, 12, 1, 2... There was four hours of trading after London closed. London closed down 300 Dow points. 300 Dow points. And now, in uh, the Dow terms, 
We're down 513 points at 11,384. And so I would expect that they would probably open up 200 points lower tomorrow in the FTSE in London. You know, it's amazing to me. I'm the only one that uses formulas that I've ever heard of. And in comparing different markets, there's nobody else that does it. I mean, you can get real good feel for for trading trends by doing that. And as a trader, I used to do it all the time, made a lot of money by being able to back into what probably would happen the next day in the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, I follow the FTSE starting about uh, 4 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, by the time the market opens, around three and a half, four hours later, uh, I've got I got an idea what's going to go on in the markets, and also with, with gold and silver as well. And I use two feeds, one from CNBC, but the more important feed early in the morning is um, is uh, Bloomberg. Uh, Bob, we have to uh, go to a break. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. Listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon, August 4th, 2011. James Burns joined, as always, on Thursday by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And before the break, Bob, you were breaking down your formula for uh, gauging uh, not only the uh, the markets here in the U.S., but uh, how they kind of intertwine with the rest of the markets, like the FTSE, for example. Well, especially where the FTSE and the CAC Caron in Paris and the DAX in Frankfurt they all precede, and uh, uh, you have the uh, uh, the DAX and the Cacaron in Paris on the same time zone, and then one hour later is London, and so the markets are not as powerful and as centralized in those two locations as they are in London, but you can get a good feel of what's going on, and... Uh, by the time you're ready to open in New York, you look at what happened the day before. Now, we know, and we just talked about, the Dow being off 512 and the FTSE being off 300 earlier, 300 Dow points. That means that they'll probably have to open the FTSE down 300 on the opening tomorrow excuse me, 200 in the opening to give it 300 Dow point additional. But they don't need that much. They only need 200. So it'll probably open uh, about 130 points lower, 120 points lower on the FTSE opening. So you can look for that. I I do all these calculations in my head while I'm talking to you. Um, I learned that as a child. That's one of the things that... uh, you had to do in the days before calculators. But anyway, uh, that's where I think it's headed in the morning. And if the FTSE is off more than 120, you'll know that the Dow is going lower. Let's say FTSE is off 200. Uh, that's about 80 points lower. So the Dow would probably open up uh, 80 points off from the previous day. And it's a great way to trade, but nobody ever uses it. And uh, there's a lot of other earmarks that you learn, you know, over 52 years uh, on how to deal with the markets. Um, I think, generally speaking, the American public uh, is anesthetized to what's going on. Uh, They don't know. And if they know, they don't understand. People with retirement accounts are probably 
tearing their hair out because they can't get their money out unless they, on a 401k, are uh, allowed to borrow against it. And uh, I've been telling people over and over and over again to do that, and some did, most didn't, they didn't listen, and they procrastinated. And so now they've got a big problem because at the the rate we're going down here, it'll be somewhere between 8,500 and 10, I think, 10,500. Could be 10,500. It's only 800 points away. And quite frankly, the quicker it happens, the better to get it out of the way and reset sites and where it's going after that. And I explained gold, I don't think it's going to go much lower. And silver, either silver's off three dollars in one day. I mean, it's insanity. And of course, the market's rigged. So they were happy. They, your government, and the people who control it—not not your Congress, the people who control your government—they're um, happy to have gold and silver and commodities down, and uh, making people think that overall. These markets will pull down by the Dow and by regular stocks. And that's not the case. No, they're being deliberately knocked down under the cover of the market going down. So everybody says, well, the market went down, so everything went down with it. Normally, it doesn't work that way. And there's not any deleveraging because all of the, the, the biggies on Wall Street, insurance companies, and the hedge funds, they're all short gold and silver and shares. So they're not covering. Otherwise, we would have got a bounce. And so those entities, gold, silver, and commodities, are being del- deliberately knocked down to create a picture for people, to scare people out of their investments in those areas. And so what's next is probably a lower market. And as I said earlier, they could get gold and gold in particular down a little bit more, but it's, it's no big thing. It's going higher, and they know it. And when I see JPM calling for $2,000 gold, that means it's going to 3000 I've been doing this too long. I know what propaganda is. And, of course, the American public just doesn't know. They don't get it. And uh, eight-tenths of one percent of people own gold and silver-related assets. That's dreadful. Yeah, Bob, I definitely see a lot of fear going on right now when it comes to gold and silver. I mean, you see it locally in, like, local... um like businesses that deal in gold and silver, they have all these advertising like, we'll, we'll buy your junk uh, silver and gold that you just have laying around. I mean, they just make it seem like gold and silver are worthless when they're worth way more than, than that fiat currency that we carry around. And then, like, I, I heard about that, you know, speculation that gold was going to go up to $2,000 before the end of the year. And I figured that was kind of low, and I'm, I'm, I'm more along the line of you. I think it's going to go much higher than $2,000, and I believe that silver is going to go up as well. At the same time, you see the U.S. Uh, borrowing is, uh, has topped 100% of the GDP. It went up um, $239 billion in a single day. And it, all this, in my opinion, Bob, is connected. Everything that's going on, this phony debt deal, the super Congress, uh, this new recession, as uh, CNBC is reporting, the unemployment benefits drying up at the same time as all this other crap going on, and the Dow going down 512 points. I mean, it just seems like Everything's being done intentionally to happen as if this is some sort of perfect storm. It's coordinated. There's no question about it. And unfortunately, there's not many people left who have been in the markets as long as I have. Most of them are dead. And uh, that's what happens to human beings (laughs) and other forms of animal life. Um, As far as the sale of gold and silver to these pawn shops and other kinds of dealers, um, you can figure you'll get 30 cents on the dollar. Uh, they'll screw your feet right to the gr- right, right to the floor. So you don't want to do that. <clears throat> the 
the overall picture uh, is going to uh, continue for the next several days to be uh, messy and um, uh, again I think it was all planned and they have the ability to do take the market down when they want to and the bank stocks get banged pretty hard uh, and rightly so if the market's going down uh, they'll get banged around a lot of the banks uh, the big ones are bankrupt and um, the insiders know that but the public doesn't and the same thing is true in Europe um, in Europe I think they're discovering again that the public doesn't want to bail out anybody in the solvent countries and you know a year and a half ago from the very beginning, I said, that's the best way to go. Take your loss. I want you to lend to the Greeks. Let them write off all their debt. And uh, get out of the euro. Set the value of the drachma in about 50% of what the euro is. And then they've got to clean up their own house. Or it's going to just go back to what it was before, but no one's going to bail them out again. And so and then you've got five other countries who've got the same problem. There's no way that the solvent countries have enough money to bail everybody out without going bankrupt themselves. And I think they're coming to that realization. I talked a lot about that when I was on the air last week uh, on radio and, and television with, uh, with uh, the stations over there. They interviewed me again. And... Uh, I, I got the same kind of interview when I did an interview in Rio de Janeiro with their biggest magazine there. And then I did another one in Caracas with the largest newspaper with the editor. And then I did another interview in Tehran in Iran the other day. And I was also approached by History Channel to do a hour-long segment and they wanted me to come back into the United States to do it. And I said, no, I won't do it. You put me on Skype. If you don't want to do that, forget it. Like, let somebody else do it. So what's happening here is agencies that are involved in the media throughout the world are real interested about what we are talking about on this program. And because we make links on the program, which we get almost immediately, and they're in the publication. Sometimes there's 10 or 12 or 15 of them for, you know, in each issue because I'm on 40 hours a week with a whole bunch of programs. Those are going all over the world. I got a letter yesterday from uh, the editor of a newspaper in Amsterdam and said, you know, can I interview you? And I said, sure, just let me know when. And, you know, I told him where I was, what time zone, that sort of thing. And uh, we're getting to them big time. Because the world's finding out what they're doing. And they can't have that. And I'm very happy not to be in the United States. I was told by somebody I know earlier today, in fact, two people, and one of them was in Washington. And he said, you ought to be very happy that they don't know where you are. Wow. That's Can you imagine the nightmares I'm creating for them? Definitely, Bob. I mean, you're going on, you know, countless radio stations, shows, and, you know, you're on TV stations and newspapers throughout the world, you know, speaking the truth, and they, they definitely don't like the the truth getting out as much as it has been. I mean, I, I know that they, they have this sick fantasy about, you know, telling us what exactly they're going to do beforehand, you know, that's kind of like their code, the Illuminati. But at the same time, I think that they've kind of opened the box and, you know, too much stuff is spilling out. Well, they've got some old hands like me. Unfortunately, there's only a handful of us who've been watching them for 50 years and studying what they've been doing. And we're able to back into where they're headed. And that's priceless. Absolutely priceless. And unfortunately, most of the newsletter writers and 
people in the media don't have that ability or the background. For the most part, age is a problem. You know, the 35, 50 year old people, um, they haven't experienced any of this. And they would have had to <clears throat> deeply stu study the situation quickly in order to come up with the same kind of conclusions uh, as someone who's been around for a long time. And, uh, you know, today it makes me very happy that I am the age I am and I know what I do know and I'm very able up till now to be able to impart that knowledge with other people. At least they'll understand what's being done to them by whom and why. And they might very well be able to uh, take actions which will protect them. It was a bloodbath in the shares today. Um, incredible. They should have been going the other way. They were attacked by government early. Uh, most of them were 5 or 6% on the day. And uh, that can't be helped. And, uh, but, you know, I say to subscribers, you're long-term investors. And um, uh, that's all we're concerned about. And so one of the things that does happen when this does happen is if you got cash, you get some great opportunities to pick up gold and silver or the shares or the coins or the bullion, and you should be doing that. And if you don't know where the bottom is, and I don't either, uh, what you do is um, you may, let's say you had $100,000. You go in 25000 at a time and hope that it goes lower. <laughs> so you can dollar cost average. That's a great opportunity for people who understand what's going on. But what happened today was uh, one of the worst days in the history of the market, uh, history of uh, gold and silver and shares, but that's okay. Yeah, and, I, and I get the feeling, Bob, that you're going to have plenty of uh, worse days to come, unfortunately. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Your questions coming up right after this. You're listening to Freedom Files on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon, August 4th, 2011. James Burns along with Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And in the final segment, we like to sit back and uh, get your questions into Bob. So if you'd like to uh, email me or you can call into the show, feel free and do so. Area code 402-AFR-2525. That's 402-237-2525. And while we're waiting for your calls, we're going to start with some email questions, Bob. Uh, this one comes from Louie in New York. He wants to know if reinstating the Glass-Steagall Act would do any good. Well, it certainly would go do good, and I'm all for it. Uh, it's a um, battle that's been taken up by a few in Congress, and, uh, and the LaRoche group is behind it very strongly. And it should have uh, never been neutralized or thrown out the way it was with the imposition of the, I forget what they call uh the act that replaced it in 1999. I wrote a great deal about it at that time, saying it was a disaster. Having worked at Wall Street all those years, I knew what they were after, a tremendous leveraging. And, and you know, they don't use inside information. They create it because they're the ones that control the Fed. And so they know everything that's going on. And so they have a license to steal. And uh, without the separation of banks from brokerage firms, banks from insurance companies, that was a very, very powerful thing that they got back. And look what they've done with it. I mean, we've had the, uh, the run, uh, the dot-com bubble, uh, and then we had the real estate bubble. And these are all deliberately created. 
I mean, you had firms like Goldman Sachs selling bonds that contain mortgages called CDOs and MBSs to other professionals. And after they sold them to them, they shorted against them because they knew they had to go down in value because they were rated AAA by S&P, Moody's, and Fitch, who were working with these people who control those three agencies on Wall Street. And they weren't AAA, they were triple B. And now they're worth 5, 15, 25, 30 cents in the dollar. And the Federal Reserve is sitting with about almost 1.3 trillion worth. And uh, goodness knows what they paid for them or what they're worth. And, um, you know, they may be setting the stage here for a collapse now. It's possible. And, uh, or events leading up to a nearby collapse, maybe in six months or a year, whatever. Uh, usually things don't happen overnight. And, um, this could be part of what's going on here. And in any other time, uh, were this to be 1987 or 1979, 80, uh, you would say it was a natural occurrence for the most part. Not today. I mean, they have a license to steal with this president's working group in financial markets. They can do anything they want. I mean, if you own stock XYZ of $50, and they decide uh, they want to short it and want it down at $15, they'll do it. And the, F the SEC does nothing to stop it. The CFTC does nothing to stop things that go on in the commodities business on COMEX. And so you, you have a limited form of dictatorial government now, and um, it's going to get a lot worse. It is pretty amazing, Bob, how dramatically things changed uh, you know, over the past couple of decades alone, how fast uh, this uh, police state has you know, you know, lunged itself at us in so many different ways. I mean, with uh, expansions of agencies and uh, new laws that have come into being. And, of course, the, you know, the Glass-Steagall Act being repealed back in the 90s, I think this was all done by design. Well, it was. And these are all long-range plans. Uh, they have hundreds of thousands of people because they have endless supplies of money working 24-7 worldwide in their foundations, think tanks, groups that they fund. And they're working toward an end which would be world government. And that's what we're fighting here. Uh, it, it's like an octopus. You have to keep on cutting the arms off so it doesn't smother you. And we're not getting a lot of assistance. The assistance that's coming is very, very limited. And, uh, and most of the people who come to try to spread the word don't understand the history. And it makes it difficult for them to say, well, you know, if you look at 1438 or 1790, you can make the comparisons, and these people are incapable of doing that because they don't know what happened. Yeah, that's right. I mean, people just have a lack of knowledge when it comes to history, and being a history buff myself, one thing I've learned about it is you know, two things actually. You know, if you if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. And you know, like like saying with the repeat thing, history does repeat itself. If you don't, you know, learn from it and and correct your mistakes, I mean, it just keeps happening over and over again, uh, like a snowball rolling down the mountain, getting bigger and bigger. And that's true. Let's see. Okay, we got another email coming in. Another email question. This one is coming from let's see, Casey in Arizona. He's asking uh, what you think about the idea of uh, Wall Street paying like a 1% tax on trading and exchanges. Well, it's just another tax on the public. 
and we don't need taxes, we need reduction in spending. And those in Congress know if there is a reduction in spending, then the economy will slow down even more and revenues will get smaller. That's what's happening right now. Uh, they're terrified about this unemployment report that's coming out tomorrow. And, well, they should be. Um, the U3 probably will probably come in about 9, 2, 9, 3, somewhere in there. But the U6 is what you got to watch because that includes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And it's 16.3 right now. And it probably will come in about um, about uh, 13.6, excuse me, 16.6. Um, if you withdraw the birth-death ratio, which is the birth of and the death of businesses, which are totally bogus figures, you come out with something on the order of 22.8 or 22.9% unemployment. And that means the revenues aren't going to come in. And they were talking today about the extended unemployment uh, being curtailed, uh, more and more people going off of unemployment or extended unemployment. And so... Uh, there was a lot of bad news today, and we're probably going to get some bad figures tomorrow because these people on Wall Street know ahead of time what the figures are. They're not supposed to, but they do. And I know that's not fair, but that's the way the system works. It's rigged. And that's how the rich get richer, and there's not very much you can do about it. For those who are interested... In 1933, which was the peak of the Great Depression, U3, which is probably tomorrow going to be 9.3, was 25.2%. And the U6, which tomorrow will probably be around 16.7%, uh, was in 1933, 37.6%. Wow. So we've got a long way to go here. We do indeed, Bob. And we have about a minute left, Bob. Uh, fire off the website and how people can get the international forecaster. Forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world, published Wednesday and Saturday by email. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month uh, for those not in the net. And uh, everything you need, you need to know every week is in the publication. Free copies, theinternationalforecaster.com. Forecaster is spelled F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R. -E -E you can also ask a question, and you do that by emailing. We answer everybody. You can get a copy that way. You can get a copy of our gold and silver recommendations and that number. Uh, that address, Bob, B O B, at intforecaster.com. Bob at I N T F O R E C A S T E R dot com. For those of you who would like to call toll free, 877 479 8178. 877 479 8178. You get a free copy, or they get a special deal there if you want to become a subscriber. You can get a full one year subscription free. The offer that they're offering there is absolutely terrific. It absolutely is, Bob. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. You got it. Bye-bye.